the biggest night in podcasting has arrived again. The annual modern escape is like, start again. The biggest <laughs> night in <laughs> I'm already It'll drunk. Be all right on the night. <laughs> Woo! The biggest night in podcasting has arrived again. The annual Modern Escapism Academy Alternative Awards, a.k.a. The Biggies 2022, will commence. Glamorous ladies, dapper gentlemen, and glorious variations thereupon. This is Modern Escapism. Pew! Hello and welcome to this glamorous star-studded live event. So be warned, things will go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello to everyone watching live and to everyone listening in the future. The Biggies 2022 will start after around half an hour of pre-show shenanigans, then on to the red carpet for the main event. My Just name is for the coat to come. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry up. <laughs> Yes, it's right. live. Yellow it's card. live. A few of us are a bit poorly, and Biggie's live. So this is this is the problem. Yeah, the, the, yeah, you're going to get unadulterated Biggie here, unfortunately. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I already I, had one hours time. of content from him to, <laughs> to you know stop us getting banned from the internet. <laughs> so my name is Oldzol Dim, Attitude Magazine's Closet Dweller of the Year 2021 <laughs> nominee, and today I am joined by. The queen of podcasting and goth.com's pale skin of the year winner. It's the stunning candy machine. Hello. It's all true. <laughs> Fisherman's friends, man of the ocean, 1956 winner. It's Big Cop Man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Crucible Snooker Magazine's Q Ball of the Year Award nominee. It's Gadget 8 Bit. God, I hate you. <laughs> and the Sunday Sports Rear of the Year 2007 founder and winner. It's Stig. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> good Problem is escapism's ass. <laughs> that is correct. Before we go any further, we have to sell this shit to everybody. Stig? Yes, if you like what we do, we have a Patreon. If you head over to patreon.com forward slash modern escapism, you will find what we do on there. We have three tiers. First up is the modern escapees. For £5 a month, you get an extended edition of this episode every week, as well as at least one monthly special and any other specials that we do. If you're into Dungeons & Dragons, we do a DD and d play podcast called Do Dragons Dream of Scott Sheep? And for £5, the Scott Sheep tier will get you ad-free early access of the episodes, as well as original artwork by Candy, any original music, battle maps, and character sheets we put together for the show. And you'll also be able to suggest NPC names and items for Gadget. And for £7.50, the Biggie Bundle, that gets you everything. Everything indeed. So, so VAT. <laughs> I love that. Idea. <laughs> so, before we crack on to the biggies, we're going to do a little what we've been up to this week, what we affectionately call the Nexus. So, I want to start with what you can see in front of you. Gadget, you've been up to this week. Uh, well, I've been off work all week because it was my birthday on Monday. So, I have been happy and birthday. A lot. Thank you. Happy um, birthday. I've also been playing ungodly amounts of Elden Ring, which I'm not going to get into because... Because <laughs> we've done it too much. <laughs> we've done it too much already, and I'm nowhere near finished it yet. Um, Never heard of that game. No, it's good. no. It's, it's, it's a little indie game under the radar. Um, <laughs> it might win go, an award this evening. Yeah. <laughs> I did go and see The Batman on Monday. The Batman. Uh, and to kind of back up both of what um, Stig and Candy said about it, it's fucking fabulous. It's so fucking good. Mm -hmm. Um... I I agree with Stig. It's now my favorite Batman film. I wow. think it's elevated wow. slightly above The Dark Knight, if only because it feels more realistic. I still there is a lot about The Dark Knight that feels still silly to me, mm -hmm. not in a bad mm -hmm. way. Like it's still a great film, but I don't know. There's I, th I think I really liked um, Paul Dano as the Riddler. I think he played such a good baddie. 
I like uh, and I also like seeing Batman, you know, solving crimes and yeah. not just beating up poor people. Mm-hmm. Um, and just some little things I noticed. Like I saw it in IMAX and the sound was incredible, especially during the, the car chase sequence. When he um, first revs up the Batmobile, I honestly thought me, me, me skeleton was going to shatter. Like, it was so, <laughs> yes. like the base of that engine was so heavy. It was so good. Um, so, yeah, it's absolutely, absolutely fabulous film. I really enjoy it. The soundtrack's f- fantastic. Colin Farrell's amazing in it. Mm. Um, yeah, just across the board, brilliant. Um, the I guess the, uh, I've read a bit more of that um, uh, to, uh, uh, to Sleep in a Sea of Stars. And, ah, yes. as a, and and continue, continuing the, the the downward slide in the score of it based on Christopher Paolini's humiliation of me in, this, in the way he treats women throughout the book. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, he really did you, didn't he? Section, I got very annoyed about him uh, getting to a point where he starts talking about Kira's periods. I was not happy about that. Uh, I now get to the point where, um, towards the end of the novel, um, where you know they're about to do the climactic battle, she, of course, goes and sleeps with the, with the hunky space captain. No, oh. the pages before she had not shown any interest in. Was she still oh. on a period? No, but <laughs> well, she, the, the, so the, so the way it was described, <laughs> it, it just made me fucking howl because it's so bad. Because again, the whole story thing is she's got this alien suit that's kind of bonded to her skin and all that. And as she's going throughout the book, she's like, she's like, it, it communicates with her, and she's kind of like teaching it to like you know react to her thoughts and like do do whatever she needs to do so you get points where she's like getting it to like retract over her hand so she can see her skin again that comes into it in the sex scene oh no where she has to it, it a rather rather gr- a gruesome description of it retracting her, she, her focusing on her groin no. to retract it away but then after the deed is done it doesn't go into the detail of the deed but after the deed is done of course kira sat there thinking i wonder if the soft blade would let me get pregnant Oh, fuck. <laughs> so it's now down to a 7 out of 10. How awkward is it that um, he retweeted us and probably listened? He, he did listen to the review because he commented on the good review. Said, I said, yeah, he enjoyed the review because, <laughs> because, he, because I'd said that the book's thick enough to beat a donkey to death with, and he thought that was the best blurb he'd ever heard. If he does um, pop into the chat tonight, pretend we've not said anything, guys. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just say no, it's a challenging wank or something, you know. So. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> oh, no, that's pretty good. Cool. We're live, <laughs> uh, but the apart from that, apart from being slightly horrified by that, uh, the only other thing I've done this week is, um, uh, you can see on the video, um, I got my new synthesizer this week, so I've been oh, noodling yeah. around with that and car, making yeah. lots of pretty noises. Like, I'm in a bad episode of Doctor Who, so that's kind of been. My week, really. I've just Play been Van Halen and jump. This. You what? Play Van Halen and jump. I used to know how to play that on a keyboard. Learn it for next week. Yeah. I'll learn it for next week. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it if you want. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and kind of based on what, just based on what I've been saying, there, um, uh, Zen Infinity says, "What the author of Christ- Christopher Paolini happens to be in the chat tonight? I have several questions about the Eragon film." <laughs> 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 yes, we all have questions about. I don't the Aragon think he film. had much to do with that. No, uh, but yeah, it's, it's been a it's been a quiet week for me, other than playing, like I say, ungodly amounts of Elden Ring. That's perfect, perfect. Let's move on to me, because uh, I am second in the boxes. Um, I want to talk about a little trip I had this past weekend with um, one Stig and one. Uh, let me get me used to women. <laughs> one gadget. <laughs> <laughs> it's opposite <laughs> and gadget. Um, I went to Newcastle. It was Newcastle, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, it was Newcastle. <laughs> Got nosebleed going too far north for oodles. And we had a very, very good time. Um, I just want to—I want to shout out to was it Cozy Joe's that we went? Yeah, to? Yeah, Cozy Joe's, the most ram-packed pub I've ever been into post-pandemic, and just an exceptional little karaoke booth we had. I didn't know that on this podcast we had two—we have two rappers. <laughs> Stig and Gadget. No, they no, have rap no, gods. No, no. What what you have is two middle class white boys that used to sing along <laughs> to Eminem in their teenage years. <laughs> I was so impressed. I was so impressed with both of you straight away. Do you know why you have that like, warm up karaoke song? People do this. People do that. And no, these two like just straight up rapping. Like Stig had Hamilton on. Gadget was rapping to Eminem or something. I, I don't yeah. know the difference. Please was... tell me you recorded that. 
I have recordings, special recordings that I've saved because they're too long to put in our Discord, luckily. <laughs> so I have got full videos of oh, some, excep some exceptional work, some exceptional work. We went with uh, Gadget's friend Mark and his lovely partner Pip as well. And it was just what a lovely little weekend we had for, it, well, for Gadget's birthday. Two of our co-hosts couldn't make it, sadly, because they are Slackers. terrible friends. Oh, I um, know. I was so disappointed <laughs> as well. I love a bit of karaoke. And I saw the, I saw so some good. of the videos too. It was it was just so. I mean, the put was in one room where the aircon was leaking on us, so they yeah. had to move us. Then didn't. <laughs> and then they moved us into moved us into a room where one of the microphone cables was just hanging free. Yeah, so Stig decided to break <laughs> it fully. <laughs> it got wrapped up. No, you, someone's got wrapped up. I said, "Pass the mic," and I lifted it up, and it was broken. I don't think mm. I broke it. I don't know who broke it, but it was broken. I broke my back. I know I did that. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Stig's got a right bruise got, on his bum. I don't think you can see. I've got a massive bruise on my arm there and a huge one on the back of my leg where I tripped over one of the tables. Um, <laughs> bruise. We, 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 these two are absolute lightweight. On my ass because I like, whacked it off the corner of a table. Was that we due to the, choreography or alcohol? Both. <laughs> I was going to say, is this like combat karaoke? <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> it's Newcastle. Um, oh. We, 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 also, we also had the, wait the waitress come in at one point and just spill all the drinks on the floor. <laughs> she did that thing where she just, she just accepted it and went, ah, oh, never mind. <laughs> and then she came up with that. more drinks and then some shots to say sorry the fact that we're all covered in gin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Turns out you guys, uh, I, I mean, you were, we were actually putting it away quite well, weren't we? All of us, to be fair. We didn't oh, stop. Oh, God, yeah. Um, I was still ready to go, but then again, when I'm in a foreign city, I don't... Foreign city. Well, you know what I mean. I, I don't. I like to know where I'm going to be ending up, so going so back home was fine. Supernatty Cat's asking, what would your karaoke songs of choice be? Well, I know. I, 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 I do tell, Elvis. I can tell you this. I can tell you this. Don't do this. Run to the Hills towards the end of the night, because afterwards I couldn't speak for three days. I literally blew my voice out. <laughs> yeah. Your voice ran to the hills. It, it ran to the hills. It ran far away. I did, I did Elvis to start with, didn't I? Um, yeah. Gadget did a few weird ones that I'd never heard before, but why not? Well, I, did, I, did, I basically I did, did the whole Hamilton play. No, I did not. I did two <laughs> Hamilton songs, but I also started on Elvis, Suspicious yes, Minds did. by Elvis, uh, Blaze of Glory, John Bon Jovi, always comes yeah. out, yeah. and decided to tackle the Who uh, rain on me. Mate, that was lovely, that. That's what blew your voice out. That's what blew my voice. <laughs> Fuck me. I went big time. Out. And then, not even, but halfway through, Pip changed the song. I was like, no, I was, I was in the zone. You were in the zone, mate. So I you put are. it back on and redid the whole thing again. <laughs> you were. I, I did. Um, I, I started off with Welcome to, to the Internet by Bo Burnham. And forgot <laughs> yeah, you how did. Fast you started with was. that and you forgot how fast it was. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then I did The Real Slim Shady, which I did you better did. on. I just can't believe you did that. I've never heard anyone do that on karaoke. Um, what was the other one? I, I, I did um, uh, You're Welcome from Moana. The, yes, you did. Oh, yeah. Also oh, had a rap part in it as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, it was just a good... What, what candy, Biggie, what songs would you pick out of if you had to go on a karaoke? What, what's your, I always you want start off with a bit of uh, Tenacious D. Hmm? We um, ended with that, didn't we? Fuck her gently. Fuck her gently. <laughs> and the greatest <laughs> song in the world. I, I like to move to a bit of uh, Audio Slave, actually, because you, you can really warm up the <laughs> yeah no what's the other one show me tell, how me how to, tell me how to live tell me how yeah. to live yeah wow um, wow okay well, how about you? Um, oh how i do a little bigger? bit of cameo as well word up oh, yeah oh word word up. i really really can't sing um the only time i've ever really done karaoke was when we did a rock band night at mate's house and uh we covered uh sabotage beasties yes and naturally i did the rapping what everybody it's, else it's good when you're in them booths because you, you you lose that stigma because i was with people i wanted to be with anyway so i didn't care if i mean fortunately i can sing anyway so not, not bigging myself up but i can but it doesn't matter if you can't because you're in a booth and no one else can hear you it's, it's fucking yeah brilliant. I, I wouldn't do that on the stage no not chance. Like, if, 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 like, if you yeah, wanted to do karaoke it. on the stage there, it gets so packed. You basically need to get your karaoke slot in as soon as the place opens at eight o'clock. Yes, it's such that is one of the busiest karaoke bars I've ever seen in my life. It was absolutely rammed. It's like the busiest place I've been since the pandemic. You no, know, we, yeah. um, my local club, used to do a karaoke night every now and again. And during yep. one of the Euros, two of the like, used to do a competition, hundred pound winner, one of the yep. Euros, two two of the lads I know decided to do three lions. And they were God. both, they were terrible, but they got the whole club singing and then it, and won it. 
That's the main thing, isn't it? Yeah. But yeah, that, it's a, that's our... It's a Filipino pastime, you see. So is it? if you ever go over there, it's literally every other party has that's karaoke pulled out. And I love people that are amazing singers, singers. I just love hearing them burst in a way. It's fantastic. And I really find people that really can't sing really funny, if they're aware of it. It's those in the middle that are unaware how bad they are. They're the ones mm -hmm. that do my mm -hmm. head in. Well, that's all I wanted to chat about this week, really. I was going <laughs> to chat about the Adam Project, but it didn't wow me enough to chat about. So. Yeah, same. I was doing right. the exact same thing. It was just, it's all right. Yeah. Candy. It's all right. Uh, <laughs> I'm never going to get used to which side you're yeah. on. <laughs> Hello. I went to a gig last night, the first proper, proper metal gig I've been <coughs> to um, in the last couple of years, really. And I went to the Thekler in Bristol, which, if you don't know, is a boat. Um, oh. Most nights, this boat is fairly stable. Last you night, on a boat. it was a rocking. So it's it's moored. Con it, it doesn't go down a river or anything. It's moored. But it... it yeah. I have not been to a gig like this in a probably about 20 years. There was a full-on mosh pit, the likes of which I have not seen since the good old Slipknot days. Wow. It was incredible. The band was called the Nova Twins, which they've um, started to explode in popularity in probably about the last year or so, I would say. I don't actually know how I discovered them. I think that it was my, something... Sorry, my from days put people equal shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's she is pun, I will say she was pun meister general. That's pun of the year, that that's fucking an oh, She's figure. just getting warmed up, trust me. Wow. Um <laughs> it was incredible. I, I got bruises, I got other people sweat on me, I got stuck to the floor. Just it was brilliant. Um yeah, so good. So um yeah, actually went out last night and then I've been watching on Apple TV a show called Severance. And gadget, Severance. you are going to absolutely love this. Ooh, I've heard good things. It's so good. So I just put it on um, just to kind of see. And it's basically a new sci-fi drama on Apple TV. It's directed by Ben Stiller. So uh, oh, wow. as you probably oh. know, the things that he directs are always a little bit weird. And this yeah. is no exception. So it's starring uh, Adam Scott, Christopher Walken, Patricia Rockett, and John Turturro. Um, oh, there's currently wow. six episodes out. I'm not too sure how many there's going to be. I think there's, probably, there's usually about eight isn't there at the moment. Um, I've seen five because I started this the day before yesterday, I haven't had any time. Um, mm -hmm. Oh my God. So the, the basic concept is when you're at home, you've got absolutely no memory of your work life, absolutely nothing at work, and vice versa when you're at work, which at first it does seem quite simple and quite a nice concept. You think, oh, you know, I can go home and just not think about work at all. Um, yeah. And the concept kind of is, it's explained in more detail, like the caveats and the loopholes and stuff, as explained during a, a dinner scene in the first episode. And it becomes kind of obvious that the severance concept, because that's what it, it's called, uh, like a severing process. Yeah. Um, so the concept, it's deemed like quite a sensitive subject, sort of ethically and socially a little bit controversial. Um, mm. And basically, you're um, essentially becoming two separate people. So there's the you, the innie. Um, that lives at work and they don't, they aren't aware of sleeping or every, anything. They finish their work day, they go up a lift, they come back down a lift, they start the new work day, and all they feel is kind of like refreshed. They know they've had a sleep, they know nothing about it. Um, and then your Alti, who has a completely separate life. Um, wow. And the main characters, so basically, it's, it's sort of a, a mysterious. Um, I don't know if it's it's like a tech firm. I wouldn't say it, it seems like it's government run, but I don't think it is. It just has that kind of atmosphere. But um, the main character's job's there to um, decipher a code, which appears to just be like a random sequence of numbers that they're told to group it together and separate. And um, yeah. there's there's sort of you know how do we know what how do we sort these into groups and everything? And it's explained that they, it, these particular numbers you'll see it because it will provoke a reaction like a really strong emotion like fear or like joy and then you group them together and off they go um we don't actually know what these numbers do. like we don't know the point of why they're being sorted out we don't know what they do when they are sorted like what they're for or anything um but when one of the new recruits starts kind of um questioning what they're doing or why they're trapped and how do they even resign if they want to um the, Bloody, the new director... recruits. <laughs> Bloody new recruits. Bloody new recruits. But the director sort of explains that people usually don't resign because depending on how long they've been working there, 
once they resign and they don't come back, that's their entire work life and everything they know, that's just completely gone. That's that side of them absolutely gone. Um, That version of themselves will be lost. Um, He also reminds them that they should be grateful that there's because there's no such thing as death or loss within work. That's just something that happens outside of work. You've got no memory of it when you come back in, um, no knowledge or anything. So they should be grateful. Um, and then the main character, it's um, it seems as if he's started working for them since the loss of his wife. So we can assume he's sort of um, he's taken on the job to kind of at least for eight hours a day or something, kind of forget the grief. Um, mm. But if you're do you know, what I got strong. If you're a fan of control, the game. I got really strong control vibes from it, just like the kind of building where you've got that all that artificial light, but not much kind of, you just can't see outside. And it's the the kind of government, just very, very plain, but somewhat kind of like just an intimidating nothingness, if that makes sense. Like there's just nothing, but it's kind of looming down on you. Mm. Um, And for some reason, they're just using, they're using really old technology. Like they're using 80s computers and that hasn't actually been explained. I don't know if it will. Um, but yeah, I have not been able to stop watching this. I'm going to watch it after. I've been absolutely glued. If you like sci-fi and if you like control and stuff like that, watch it. I mean, Maybe that's why they've got no memory of it because there's literally no memory with the computer. <laughs> 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 excellent, excellent. Brilliant. Severance on Apple TV. Stig, you've been doing The only thing that I have watched, managed to watch this week is I started Pieces of Her on Netflix. So a piece of hers, it's an American thriller, drama um, series. It stars Tony Collette, uh, Bella yes. Hethcott, and um, various other people, which I've never heard of, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> but I, I just don't want to spend time going through a lot of names that no. people won't have heard of for now, really. But yeah, it's, it, so it follows the story of Andy, who is caught up in a mass shooting at a local diner, and moments later she witnesses her mother, Laura, played by Tony Collette, violently eliminate the shooter. And this starts to unravel um, a mystery about her mother's past. Um, why uh, Her mother is insistent that no police are involved, don't tell the police, no press or everything, and she tries to keep herself out of the limelight. And... Obviously, it starts to become apparent that there is a reason for this because she has a hidden past and she doesn't want the people from that past to find out where she is. Mm. She's relocated to a small town in the middle of nowhere, America, basically. And so the whole show is basically just centered around us unraveling the mystery of Laura's past while Andy, the daughter, is kind of moved from place to place, meeting up with people from a past, trying to unravel the mystery and every step of the way, finding something new and It's hard to talk about without spoiling it, about isn't it? Mother. Yeah, it basically is <laughs> very hard to talk about without spoiling it. Um, I am it, I'm somewhere in the middle about whether I'm enjoying this or not. I'm waiting to see if it sticks to landing because I haven't watched it all yet, unfortunately. But I've got a couple of episodes left to go. There yeah, is... Um, this starts off really strongly. And then there was a few middling episodes, but then it picked itself back up again and kind of throws out this brand new mystery. Uh, I wasn't keen to start with with all the flashbacks, just yeah. because it was so random and sporadic all <laughs> over the place. And you were trying at times you're trying to figure out, well, is this happening now or is that a flashback? Because you, obviously there's the younger versions of someone playing Tony Collette. It's trying to it doesn't establish straight away. Oh, is that her? Or is that her? Yeah. yeah. Is this in that? Is this now or is that then? And the actress doesn't even really look like her either, so that throws you as well. You're just kind of like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you know, the best thing about it is, unsurprisingly, Tony Collette, former biggie Nailed winner, on. yeah, yeah, former uh, biggie winner. That's correct. But it does feel like uh, her daughter, played by uh, Bella Heathcott, is just kind of doing things. Yeah, she's just, she's just there to do things to drive the narrative forward. It doesn't really. There's not much character progression or arc within her from where you've... It could pay off eventually, but like you say, it's early days. It's, it's it? just really funny because every time, obviously, she's trying to find out what's happening about her mum, why this is all going on. And every time she asks anybody, they're like, I can't tell you, I can't tell you. Just trust me, go and do this. <laughs> so you're following her yeah. off, going to do that. But she's like, why can't you tell me? Tell me something. And they're like, we can't tell you. And they're like, <laughs> yeah. <"Fuck laughs> sake. Somebody tell her! <laughs> yeah. But what's, what's really annoying is us as the audience know. Yeah. 
Yeah. So we know what's the reason and we know what's happening. So there's no mystery to us. So there's no mystery. We're not unraveling that mystery with Andy. The if you were are. if you were unraveling that part, because of all the flashbacks, we know what's kind of happened. I haven't got to the point to know exactly why she got to where she was, but mm -hmm. you are seeing the flashbacks, you are kind of getting an understanding of what happened. I think it might have been better if they'd have done this because it is based on a novel. So I don't know whether it's taken or whether the novel's written like that or whether the novel is kind of maybe written from Andy's perspective. And then later on in the book, maybe you find out with flashbacks and what happened or she, yeah. you know, she's told what happened. But the way they've done this is they show all the audience, they show us all everything that's happening while Andy's still trying to figure out what's happening, where I think it would have been better to maybe have stuck with Andy got to an episode where we just have a big flashback episode. Yeah. And it and it then covers everything within that one episode. And then maybe a few more flashbacks after that. So you if you discovered what was going on while she discovered what was going on, it would work. But now it just seems like she's running around when you're like, well we know all this. Like, <laughs> I don't really care now because we know. It doesn't matter. Yeah, she's, uh, it's we know. Less, it's less not going to be impact. shocking when, when she finds out. Yeah, there's gonna, the, the impact isn't going to be there because we already know. You're not selling it on me, pal. No, but this literally is the only thing that I've watched. Yeah, yeah I, no, that's fine. I'm the same. I enjoy it um, because, yeah, like I've, Sticky I've says, watched... Tony Collette's in it. Um, she's driving You'll watch her anything character. with her in you. Mm. Yeah, but I, I, <laughs> it is. It, it's Karen Slaughter's the author. She, it's a page turner as a novel, I'm sure. Yeah. So whether this, like Sticky says, if there's that payoff, we'll have to see. But I'm still Excellent. invested. Excellent. Excellent. That's pieces of her on Netflix. We'll quickly move on to Biggie. We're running out of time, Biggie. Come on. What have you been doing this week? Bye. So very similar. Not an awful lot. I played Good. the first level of <laughs> of Sifu. Oh, um, yeah. Really enjoyed that so far. I love, I love um, how over the space of two weeks you've discussed the first half an hour of Sifu. Did, no, did, no. I did the intro. I did the, the intro tutorial. last time. Yeah, that's now that's I'm doing the first, first level, level, which I've completed. Gadget, gotcha. um, it took him 27 like years to be Final Fantasy VII. 27 <laughs> years. I've still the time. But yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> I think Candy put... Uh, not Candy, sorry. Um, Super Natty Cat put in the Discord that she'd been playing it and she's stuck on uh, the second level, or was. Um, and I've got that to come yet, so I've just completed the first level. And I think that is, again... Bit of an introductory fight, yeah. fight, 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 fight. Oh, it's a, it's a, a fighting spike. game. What do you expect? Yeah, there's a little spike of toughness where you oh, might die once or twice, and then you've got the boss battle, which is fine. But um, I imagine it is going to get um, a lot tougher. But uh, yeah, enjoying mm -hmm. that. But uh, in honor of this evening, I've watched a movie mm -hmm. that I've never seen before, okay. um, which was um, There Will Be Blood. Yes, mate. Yes, mate. I somehow. Never saw this. I don't really know why. It's always no, been on my really radar. Crazy for not have seen it. I haven't seen it either. No, I haven't seen it. It. What? <laughs> you want to know why? I started it. <laughs> <laughs> I started it really late at night once, and I was like, I was really enjoying it, and I was too tired, and like, I must go back to this. And for whatever reason, I never did. And every time I look at it, I just think it's really long and really depressive. I know that. And I'm just like, there will be and I'm, blood. And, I'm, and I'm in the mood. I'm like, no, but I, yeah, but I know I need to watch it. It's it annoys me that I've not. It's good job so, I have. Also, we wouldn't call ourselves a media podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Big it now. So oh, I have now watched it. It yes, is, mate. of course, with Daniel Day-Lewis um, yes. and Paul Dano, because this was the other reason why I wanted to watch it, because I don't really know anything with that guy in it, apart from oh, he's so good. about he's the so Batman, good. so I thought I'd check it out. Um, it's directed by Paul Thomas Adam, Adam, uh, Paul Anderson. Thomas Anderson, adapted yeah. from a book called Oil. And yeah, it just tells the story of um, also named Daniel Plainview, who's a ruthless oil prospector mm -hmm. who goes on a relentless pursuit to become the most powerful oil tycoon. And it literally, it, it's almost like a showcase for Daniel Day Lewis. Yeah, that's um, it, isn't it? That's the best way to describe it. He, he won the Oscar he's for this one, didn't he? Incredible. Yes. Yeah, he's incredible. I, I completely forgot I was watching Daniel Day Lewis. I was really pulled into the role. Paul yes. Dano is excellent as well as the preacher or the prophet, whatever you want to call him, yeah. that he meets later in the movie. But yeah, yes. it's just Daniel Day Lewis. What a performance! Just yeah, mm -hmm. he. You can understand why. Yes, a movie yes. Like Tigger's that just mentioned that uh, Johnny Greenwood did the score. Absolutely, yeah. The music, the cinematography is fantastic. Um, and the, the, there are other people in the movie, and their performances are great. There's a, a little kid that plays 
his yep. um, adoptive son, who apparently never went on to act again after the movie. But he's very good. Um, yeah, just please watch it. It's please you know what, watch it, it folks. It <laughs> is. It does have a depressive theme, but it is. You know what? The acting is that good that it, it doesn't matter. Mate, it, I'll watch Daniel Day Lewis just paint the wall for two hours. <laughs> talk to the wall. He's incredible. Oh god. But yeah, I, I'm just really surprised why I didn't get around to seeing it before, and I'm really glad I did. Uh, really, the, the, again, the length didn't matter. Uh, I'm glad I just you watched it, that. Mate. Really glad enjoyed it. it. Really, really good. Amazing. Excellent, excellent. That's us. Uh, what we're going to do now? Uh, we're going to have a, a little bit of an interval. So everyone, grab yourselves a drink, have a little poo, or whatever you need to do, and we'll be back. <laughs> so we'll see you very soon. <laughs> Bye.
It'll be all right on the night, they say. Well, it hasn't tonight. <laughs> <laughs> took me too long to get a bloody shirt on. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to live here from the red carpet of the <laughs> biggest and glitziest show of the year. It's the Big E's 2022. Forget the Oscars, forget the BAFTAs. This is where you want to be. First up, I see him coming down the red carpet. Oodles, how are you doing tonight? Don't talk to me. I'm busy. No. Tell me, who are you uh, expecting to come out the big winners tonight? Anyone in, in, in mind? Uh, probably modern escapism. Always modern escapism. Always number one. So, <laughs> what are you wearing tonight? You're looking dapper. Uh, Marks and Spencers. Oh, I love a bit of Marks and Spencers. Anyway, I see someone more glamorous than you come in. Fuck off. <laughs> Candy! Candy! Over here! Candy! Hello, darling. Good afternoon. Oh my God, Good evening. You look, you look you splendid. You look fantastic. Absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> oh, thank so, you. what are you wearing tonight? Look at this get up. I'm wearing a EMP curvy goth range. Ooh, Say I up. love a curvy, curvy goth. <laughs> 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 so, who are you excited to see tonight? Uh, I'm hoping Bethesda's going to win big tonight. You know, that Todd Howard, he's, he really knows how to accept an award. The uh, thing about that is, we don't accept jank at the Biggie Awards. No. Oh, so, I think you're going to be a bit disappointed. Anyway, I see him, the Fellow. man in charge, the editor, the big guy, it's Gadget. Well, hey, doing, Gadget. I'll read. I'm doing marvelous. Excellent. What about yourself? What about what are you wearing tonight? Who's this? Um, I don't know. It's a shirt and a tie that I found in the back of my cupboard. Oh, <laughs> it could have come oof. from anywhere. Oh, oh, you're such so such hipster of you. Amazing. I love it. Absolutely love it, darling. And what about yourself? Anyone on the uh, on the list tonight that you're looking forward to maybe picking up a biggie? Uh, I don't know, but I'm very much looking forward to the best beard category. It's a one. I, it's one I take a keen interest in. Oh, me too. I mean, I mean, I've been growing in mine for thirty years now. I think it's coming along nicely. <laughs> what do you think? Oh, it's marvelous! Absolutely marvelous, darling. Oh, <laughs> lovely, lovely. Wow, I see him. I'm going to have to move you along, gadget, ah, right. because oof, I've just got a bit of a boner because the oh, sex oh. appeal himself, the big man, the sexy one. It's Biggie. Oh, Biggie, you look fucking stunning. Who are you wearing? Thanks very much. Uh, I'm wearing a high and mighty suit, and I'm wearing teeny weenies for my bottoms. Oh, <laughs> you are certainly wearing teeny weenies for your bottoms. <laughs> <laughs> and what about yourself? Who, who are you expecting to come out with a Biggie one? After all, this award is named after yourself. Uh, yes, uh, my lawyer is looking into that. Uh, they will be in touch. But otherwise, I expect uh, Kill Zone 2 to wipe the slate clean tonight. Ooh. <laughs> Don't know how to tell you about this one, mate, but. Uh... Oh, you know the results already, do it's, it, No, it's just shit. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, right. but you got. Dre You've killed my buzz. <laughs> I'm with the show. I'm with the show. I'm with the show.
That's amazing. Hello! Hey! Hey, Dad. Welcome <laughs> to the second annual Biggies Award 2022. Are you all comfortable? Fuck, absolutely. Not out. really. I just about fit in this suit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you there, Walker McCoy on the red carpet. What a, what a great guy. He is absolutely the best. Love that guy. Absolutely what love him. What a great him. guy. I missed him, unfortunately. I got here a bit early, so I, I, he wasn't there. He wasn't ready. For some reason, he wasn't there. I don't get it. I got... <laughs> He's put the gun a few of I've just noticed we've got our sunglasses on. That was not intended at all. <laughs> I Can feel like I'm say, about to not be allowed into a club. You all look radiant. <laughs> right, how do I get this just... champagne? Apparently, Paul is going to get Oodles looks like Hugh Hefner. Thank you. Oh, he'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> I would literally, before we, in, back in the green room, before you were listening to this, um, we were chatting. I was like, shall I have a quick shave in five minutes? <laughs> and they're like, no, don't do it. Glow Honestly. <laughs> Trying to get this, ch- hey. this, this on. Hey. <laughs> trying to get this bloody bow tie on. I was like, it's not going on. <laughs> <sighs> but yeah, this is this is the biggest 2022. Um, the awards to it basically the, the, we decided to do this last time. Um, they're alternative awards. Um, the winners aren't obvious. Some of the nominees are obvious, but the winners are never obvious. Um, we have an academy that help us decide on winners and stuff like that. And, I mean, why not let's just crack on? Who's up for it? Yeah, let's go. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. So to kick off the event, we're going to start with a big one. This award isn't about the latest news updates. It's about escapism and procrastination, which are the fundamentals to this very show. Everyone in this category are already winners, and the actual winner was picked at random, Buy a random generator to make it fair because we couldn't decide. <laughs> <laughs> so I will host this award as your host. Um, this is the best alternative media and hobbyist podcast of the year award. Woo! Woo! Are you all ready? Oh, yes. So, Come on, too fast, too curious. And the nominees are the sequelizers. What the fuck do you want? Oh, Pain know. and rinse. Oh. The dungeon dads. Yay. Hundred things we learned from films. K Botak. The never watchers. Parentheses. The round table episodes. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> the back page. That F King show and Snugcast. Let me just get my envelope. Mm-hmm. And the winner is. What the fuck do you want? Really? Yeah. Well, uh, really, all he wanted was the awards. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, um, what the fuck do you want is a podcast hosted by Deadbeat Punk, my arch nemesis and rival. However, it's a great little podcast, isn't it? Um, it's half an hour long usually. Some of the episodes he talks to himself. Hmm. But yeah, it's just <laughs> it's nice alternative podcast. It's not about current news. It's about escapism and and wanting things. It's yeah. um it's not for your gran. It's not for your mum. Um, but I think a lot of people, nerds alike, will really enjoy this podcast. But I think that's all I'm gonna have to say on it. Um unfortunately, Deadbeat Punk couldn't be here today. But... Actually, Debbie Punk is here today because he's just said, take that cane and rinse. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's already in the back drinking. But congratulations. You can now officially put this on your pod app that you've won a biggie. Um, yeah, what the fuck do you want? Congratulations. Can I ask what the website address is? I can't remember. Um, it's um, it's UCunt. a UConn You wanted me to oh, say it, right. didn't you? Yeah. Oh, damn it. Yeah, 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 I don't say that word. I don't say that word. But yes, thank you. Thank you. What word? Not saying it. You might you might <laughs> muted for a second then. Can you say it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the next award, funnily enough, <laughs> is by the guy that's just won the last award. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> there's no Believe corruption. Me. There, there me, is no, no corruption. That anything. win was a random generator, trust me. <laughs> so, take it away. A long 12 months since we last awarded biggies. So much has happened. The chronicles of our existence contain stories and happenstance that even the drunkest of us could not predict nor comprehend. We were humbled to be asked to present an award at such a prestigious event. Those lousy cunts at Modern Escapism didn't have the fucking imagination to run their own awards event and had to beg the big punks to come and provide some decent content. Yes, that may be true, but they're a sweet bunch. Help out when you can, and not when it suits you. Otherwise, you could end up being nominated for Biggest Prick of the Year. I already have six of those. A few rotten cons of the year too. We have four nominations, and I think we can get through them in five minutes if we crack through it. Small window of time to squeeze in some horrible language and blindly rush through some information. Why, that's our forte. Or is it fort? Biggest Prick of the Year nominations. First up, we have JK Rowling, and I must say, it's great to see a bit of female representation in this year's category. The laziest writer turned transphobic attention tramp has been a busy little bollocks this year. Her only skill seems to be making shite headlines for slow news days. Cramming her nostrils into any discussion revolving around gender and her failure to comprehend it. Amazing how she can take a break from retroactively editing the Harry Potter series to make such a tit of herself. It's almost as if she's got fuck all else going on in her life. After that, we have Bobby Kotick. This Wankstein has made a career making unsafe work environments for his employees. He looks like a scrotum with ears. After being caught out several times lying about his involvement in liability and abuse cases, he has protected himself with a barrier of shareholders and cold hard money. Sadly, after news of being sold to Microsoft, we learned he wouldn't be tossed out on the street, destitute, and used as a tampon for various battery recycling stations. I'd love to kick him in the throat. Putin after this. The judo flipping jockstrap has made a complete cock of himself in recent times. Indeed. Recent events are still very fresh in our minds. We can't make light of such a scenario, and please people, if you can send Ukraine aid, please do so. You can't be a bigger cunt than I am. But we simply couldn't have a list of this year's pricks without the Kremlin Gremlin mentioned. We haven't seen such disgusting behaviour since the British last occupied Ireland. Speaking of Ireland, we wanted to include a little bit of the homeland to show that we're not biased. Geoffrey Anderson, a singer from County Down, made a massive prick of himself this year. I heard he made a little prick of himself. This country rocker was caught pulling the plums of himself in his mother's car in the middle of the day in Belfast. Why? What a victimless crime. False. He was in the view of a 12 year old child at the time. He also gets bonus prick points for his excuse. Yes, while he was naked from the waist down, completely reclined in the car, making vigorous motions at waist level. Why? He was simply playing his guitar so hard, he needed a cigarette after. Why didn't Prince Andrew think of that excuse? That was an excellent segue. Yes, the prince formerly known as Andrew made a charitable donation to somebody he never met out of the goodness of his cold black heart. I wish my old doll would donate 12 million pounds so I could fuck kids too. Fucking hell. Um, you are welcome to that line, modern escapism, out of context, whomever you are. So yes, those are the nominees. Because I was asked to make this last minute again, we have our own fucking show to produce and research for. No fucking Patreon money coming our way either. So without further ado, Punk, who the fuck is the biggest prick of the year? You. Wah! Also, Jeffrey Anderson. The Northern Irish pink guitar soloist that performs in his mother's BMW. That's the cunt. Jeffrey Anderson is our prick of the year. Because not enough people heard about this story. I wanted to share it out a bit, and the other nominations make us want to cry due to the ugliness of the world, whereas we can point and laugh at this cunt. Congratulations, Jeffrey. You are the biggest prick of the year. Impressive, considering how you wield the smallest prick of Ulster. Well, that's all from us. Until next year. We shall now return you to the slower portion of the ceremony now. Get yeah, fucked. Fucking hell. <laughs> Amazing. Wow. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Uh, excellent. Thank you very much. <laughs> <Jesus>. oh, <laughs> I like how he says, oh, I have no time to do this. Just absolutely destroys. What a guy. What a guy. Anyway. Brilliant. 
Brilliant. <laughs> Can't get over that. <sighs> right. The next award is hosted by the man the awards were named after. Biggie, this is the Best Unexpected Death in a Movie Award. Take it away. Thank you very much, Doodles. Uh, so, yes, the nominees this evening are Wash in Serenity. Oh, by the way, spoilers. <laughs> Wash in <laughs> Serenity. <laughs> After surviving an attack and safely crash landing in Serenity, everyone appears to have survived when Wash is impaled out of nowhere mid-sentence. So next up is White Boy Bob in Out of Sight, one of my favourite movies of all time. There are a couple of blink-and-you'll-miss-it scenes of Bob slipping in the movie, with the foreshadowing is clear as during the robbery, having the upper hand over Clooney, he climbs the stairs only to slip once again and shoots himself in the head. Mm. I hate it when that happens. <laughs> next up, we have Bill Murray in Zombieland. After the, the team walking around the, the America states thinking they're the only ones that survived. The America horrible... states. <laughs> yeah. I can't even remember where it was. The zombie land apocalypse. California. Then, uh, who do they come across but Bill Murray himself? And after Woody Harrison pours his love out to Bill Murray about how what a great actor he is and how he loves all his movies, only to be shot around the corner as he pretends to be an actual zombie. Um, and that's it for him. And finally, we have Marvin in Pulp Fiction. Yes, after um, Vincent and Jules um, go into that guy's apartment, who they've got to go and get the money back off for um, Marcellus, is it? Yep. 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 Um, after they get shot out, <laughs> with every shot that misses him, they turn around, shoot the guy dead, and take Marvin with them. And unfortunately, on the way through, in the car journey whilst they're discussing about this epiphany, this moment of a miracle that's happened to them all. They hit a speed bump and they shoot Marvin in the head by accident. There are all your nominees. Here Let's we go. The envelope here. And the winner is Marvin in Pulp Fiction. Whee. I love that scene. I mean, out of all of them, and there are many more, of course, there's so many you could mention. Um, I just think it's so well done. You think they're just having another chat um, and they get Marvin involved into the discussion. And they're completely out of nowhere. Vincent accidentally fires his gun and Marvin takes it in the head. Excellent. 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 Um, Thank you. Be before we move on, can I just say something? Does every Biggie, do you remember Hello. the video for Dare by Gorillaz? Mm. It's because Dare. Because I'm, I'm getting strong Dare vibes from you. <laughs> <laughs> just give us a It's Dare. It's oh, up. thingy. It's there. What's, what's really Sean Ryder? It's insulting to Biggie to say he looks like Sean Ryder. Are you trying to say he looks like Sean Ryder? Me. <laughs> Only wow. with those glasses. <laughs> with the glasses. I probably don't like him now, <laughs> definitely. Not back then, but definitely now. It's there. It's there. Excellent. Great award and great win to Marvin. You shot Marvin? Uh, right. <laughs> The next award is hosted by Candy. She's single, boys, and she looks radiant this evening. This is the Literally Unplayable Award. Uh, yes, just to give you a uh, little bit of information about this award. So it's an award for a brilliant game that may happen to be, have very minor superficial bugs or glitches that cause gamers to yell, It's literally unplayable! <laughs> Uninstalled. <laughs> yes. Um, so I'm not going to list examples because there would be too many. So, runners-up are Returnal, mm. Resident Evil 7, mm. Horizon Forbidden West, Elden Ring, Far Cry 6, and The Ascent. And the winner is... Packet Crisp, by the way. <laughs> On brand. From last week. <laughs> yes. <laughs> The winner is Horizon Forbidden West, which I'm currently playing. And boy, does it have some visual bugs. I mean, it, it's literally unplayable, I'm afraid. <laughs> I, I saw a uh, tornado caught in the bottom of a rock the other day. I've seen mm. a turkey fly out of the ground. Multiple turkeys fly out of the ground. It's literally unplayable. Literally unplayable. Mm, yeah, and she's she's not attractive enough. Literally unplayable. Oh, yeah, let's not talk about her face. My God. Gosh, By the way, listeners, I'm joking. <laughs> Sup Supernetic, I did put in the chat there. It had to be the medium. Oh. Which was oh. unplayable. 
Yeah, that was not even, that was that, not, not even jokingly. <laughs> that was too literal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, I didn't think that there was anything wrong with the ascent. I had some, I had some buggy glitches. Literally unplayable. Stick. Literally unplayable. <laughs> get, a, get a better PC. <laughs> Congratulations to Horizon Forbidden West for winning the biggie for literally unplayable award. We will be sure to notify Gorilla on their esteemed win. Uh, the next award will be hosted by Stig, the most stress-inducing performance award. Yes. Let me find my notes. There so, the most stress-inducing performance award. I won't go into describing the other things. I'll just describe... I'll just give out the nominations. Mm -hmm. So, nominations for the most stress-inducing performance award go to Robert Pattinson in Good Time, Stephen Graham in Boiling Point, Ryan Reynolds in Buried, Adam Sandler in Uncut Gems, Sandra Bullock in Gravity, Jennifer Lawrence in Mother, and Jake Gyllenhaal in Enemy. So, the winner is... Let's find something to rattle. Uh, add proof and box. Open that. That'll do. That's all I've got to hand. <laughs> Pull out the leaflet. It's your buddy and mine, Adam Sandler for Uncut Gems. <laughs> <laughs> So Uncut Gems is a film that was made by the Safdie brothers. It is this thriller about street-level misadventures of this petty crook that will not only stress you out, but aggravate you. And to some people, you may not even finish the film. It's that stressful. Uh, it might be the least enjoyable Adam Sandler movie of all time, <laughs> but some might Don't say it's, it the be but it's the best. <laughs> um, it's one of those films where everything just invades your senses all at once. And then right at the center of it is a greasy worm of a man with a bad dye job goatee and bright, bright white fake teeth smiling back at you, all while played by an irritating Adam Sandler. Um, Who's never irritating. Exactly. And you just you end up hating everything he does in this film, but you also want him to succeed so bad. Like everything he does just leads you from one fuck up to the next, piling on more and more pressure. He's, he's racing around, trying to fix all his problems. And you just want that moment where he turns it all around and it, it all work out. Oh, you <laughs> played <laughs> off. Oh, no. That's embarrassing. You, you ruined it because I had a great punchline, but no, I'm not going to give you my punchline now. So fuck you. <laughs> Literally, he went on fucking talking about the nominations for ages. So no, you're not going to get my funny punchline. <laughs> oh <Cunts>. god! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Stig. Oh god! The next. <laughs> right, I'm timing that on your next one. The next... I am. I literally had one line left, but fuck you, <laughs> twat. <laughs> He did win some at Natty Cat, and I also had I also had a great put down for Oodles, but you know oh, whatever. I, I I I I'm not on the ones and twos. Right, the next award will be hosted by Gadget, um, the go. bit of the year up. award. <laughs> Let me get the timer up. Make sure he doesn't go over. Fucking hell! The world's most competitive man. I'm yes. not competitive. It's just fucking annoying. It's annoying, isn't it? <laughs> So yes, I'm here to talk about the Beard of the Air Award, which is an award very close to my heart. And the nominees for this and one are... I <laughs> um, to be fair, the hair goes from my heart to my chin, so you know. Um, uh, Keanu Reeves in The Matrix Resurrections. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio in Don't Look Up. Mm -hmm. Ewan McGregor in the trailer for Obi-Wan. Obviously, I haven't seen the show yet, but that's a mighty beard. Uh, Nicolas Cage in Pig. And Oscar Isaac in Dune. Oh, oh. strong beards. So the winner is, if I just fiddle with a piece of paper to make it sound like I'm opening an envelope. Of course, it's Oscar Isaac in Dune. That beard is magnificent. Yeah, and it's real. Best it's part real. of the film. Absolutely no, the film is excellent. <laughs> but that that beard, my <laughs> god, I did not know that man. That man looks wrong without the beard. Now I can't. I seen a video of him on Saturday Night Live, and he was clean shaven. Mm -hmm. Didn't look like him. The beard oh. is now a part of him. He needs the beard. Mm. Excellent. 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 Well done, Oscar. I know he listens to the show. He'll be happy to accept that award. Um, 
the next award will be hosted by me. Uh, we don't all have access to strong men in our lives to keep us warm at night. We have to make do with our mediocre partners, our wives. Just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, anyway, <laughs> this is the Husbando of the Year Award, <laughs> a.k.a. Hot Dude Award. <laughs> and the nominees are Ryan Reynolds, Angry Kurt, Andrew Garfield, Jeremy Renner, DJ from Snugcast, Jason Sudeikis, Henry Cavill, Oscar Isaac, Robert Pattinson, and Big Copman. Ooh. And the winner is... Ha! Andrew Garfield! Oh, my God! Oh, for oh. fuck's sake. Who would have funk it? Who would have funk it? But, yeah, Andrew Garfield, I just fancy him. That's why he won. Congratulations, Andrew Garfield. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. The next award. Oh, oh, actually, we do have a special message from Andrew Garfield after getting in touch with his people via Twitter. And they did say, I'm calling his lawyers. And I was promptly blocked. <laughs> so, <laughs> Sounds about right. That's all we got from that. And the next award will be hosted by Biggie. This is the Best Supporting Actor Award. More serious one, I think. <laughs> Thank you very much. He looks like security. Just, he looks like security. He looks like security. He timer whenever the fuck he wants, won't he? <laughs> fucking Sorry, I, I, I had a great line. I'm, I, it's annoyed me. I <laughs> kill a line to fucking put oodles down, and you ruined it. Get up on stage. Do a can you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm let you finish. He's doing it now. Derailing, derailing the awards. <laughs> Biggie starts banging on about it, why he's nominating everything. And I, can't, I, I thought that was what we're supposed to be anything. doing. <laughs> when did they ever do that in an award ceremony? Here's the reason why this person's been nominated. Just <laughs> normally they play a little video with what they were appearing in, don't they? But we haven't done that, so I thought I'd just say why we picked. <laughs> I've spilt champagne everywhere now as well. <laughs> <laughs> Hold it too fast. Oh. This is too good. I'm a good. bartender would never do that. <laughs> oh, this is so Jesus. good. Got nothing to write it up with. This is so, so good. Biggie, continue. So, so while he looks like he's pissed himself, um, best supporting actor, the nominees are Pat Morita in The Karate Kid. His portrayal of a grieving widower was fantastic. Absolutely pulled that movie across. Really surprised he didn't get that. And he lost out to <sighs> Just tell us Cambodian the actor, <laughs> Moore, who co-starred in The Killing Fields. Next up, we have Sir Ian McKellen for Lord of the Rings. Obviously, he played the incredible Gandalf in all of the movies and The Hobbit as well. But he unfortunately lost out to Jim Broadbent in Iris. Next up, we have Samuel L. Jackson for Pulp Fiction. Yes, his incredible <coughs> performance as Jules after the candid thoughts of Royales with Cheese, delivering the memorable line, supporting the trigger and, re and re evaluation of his own path. He missed out to Martin Landau for Ed Wood. And finally, Glenn Close for Fatal Attraction, a literally frightening performance of a spurned woman who, after an affair, with her colleague in, she becomes obsessed and wants to destroy his marriage and his life. She lost now right. to share for Moonstruck. And the uh, winner is not a packet of crisps. It's a council tax bill. <laughs> <laughs> is it deserved Sir Ian McKellen for Lord of the Rings? Fly, you fools. <laughs> How on earth he didn't get it for that? I just don't know. It's still mind blowing to this day. Excellent, excellent. Well done, Sir Ian McKellen. Another listener. I know he's mentioned a few times. He's uh, he's emailed and is in a few times. So uh, the next award will be hosted by Candy, the best game soundtrack. Yes, best game soundtrack also needs no introduction. So the nominees are. Cyberpunk 2077, The Artful Escape, Deathloop, Horizon Forbidden West, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. And the winner is... 
<laughs> Sorry, wrong way around. The winner is Deathloop. Yeah. And hooray, yeah. well done, Deathloop. And I have a little uh, acceptance speech from one of the composers, friend of the show, Ross Dragenza, and I hope this oh. works. There's collusion going on here. I mean, I can't believe that we got nominated for video game awards and then the dice awards and then a BAFTA for the music for Deathloop. But all of that gets swept aside when it comes to the biggies. I cannot believe it. I'm going to build an entire new shelf to put my biggie on. And thank you so much uh, to everyone and uh, to God and uh, 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 my family. Uh, the biggies, we did it, guys! Yay! Very Excellent well brother. deserved. The biggies are actual size, by the way. Yeah, we love Ross. Yeah, and he, he deserved it. There is a bit of collusion there as well. We don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, but yeah, he, <clears throat> the, they, the whole team really does deserve award for Death Loop. It's it came he out of nowhere that soundtrack. It's just James Bond esque, and it's just perfect. Mwah. I believe Candy's going to send the biggie to him personally. Uh, I shall. <laughs> mm -hmm. I bet you will. Mm. Evening with Ross. I bet what you will. Talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. The next award is hosted by Stig. It's, it's probably the most important award of the evening. <laughs> so his his hands are off that. This is the unsung hero award. Yeah, am I allowed to say why? You are, Stig. You am are I, allowed am to... I allowed to say why? I'm just going to say this is it and then move on. And no, have you're allowed to say exactly. This is, yeah. a ve this is a very important <laughs> award. You, you, you do what you need to do. Yeah, yes, hold on. Um, I'll have uh, pepperoni, um, no, jalapenos, um, no olives, please. What are you having? Uh, yeah. yeah, okay, get two of those, please. And a, a drink and a Ben & Jerry's. Oh. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, Biggie did a live bit. <laughs> a live bit. I am. Pip says I'm a bit of Betty in the chat. I am a bit of Betty because somebody told us to prepare for this, and I did, and then I got moved on. <laughs> I'm going all Kanye on your asses. I like Kanye stick. I like it. It's chaotic. <laughs> He should have been Punk's Prick of the Year. Yeah, he's probably Prick of the Decade, be. I think. <laughs> yep. Right, right take it let's away. get on with the show. The Unsung Hero Awards. These are to celebrate the heroes behind the scenes within the film industry that no one ever gets, no one talks mm -hmm. about and no one ever gets mentioned. They don't ever mention them. They don't give them any mainstream awards. And the nominations are for the Unsung Hero Award. We have The Grip. The first assistant directors, the production assistants, craft services, stunt doubles, and slate. Ooh. And the winners are somebody's got their twitch on. It's not me. It's not me. <laughs> not me. I don't even know how to turn it on. <laughs> it's candy. The winners are. Stunt doubles. Yes. Whee! Absolutely. Nice. Absolutely, mate. Go on. So a stunt double in a movie is a or a TV show is where a scene requires skills or risk beyond what an actor is capable of, unless you're called Tom Cruise. Or willing to do. <laughs> Their goal isn't to accomplish the highest jump, biggest explosion, or craziest stunt. It is to create a realistic visual effect in the film by performing a carefully cho choreographed and planned sequence. Uh, the stunt doubles date back over 100 years ago. We've had stunt doubles uh, in the industry since the 1900s. And then in the 1910s, they started to become a proper profession because they started to up the risks and uh, because the audience wanted, they had a taste for like serial action movies. So they needed people to come in and actually do these dedicated stunts. Uh, as time obviously moved on into the 60s and 70s, we saw more modern techniques being introduced with like airbags and bullet squibs and air rams. And then obviously since then, movies and especially action films just got bigger and bigger in scale with more elaborate and crazy stunts being concocted. You know, however, these they really are brave men and women. They put their bodies on the line literally for the sole purpose of us, us being entertained to say, wow, that looks like an amazing action sequence. 
and they are completely and utterly ignored by mainstream awards. Like mm. the Oscars, literally say they don't have time to give out a, it's bollocks, mate. St- a stunt award. Do, That's do, they, the do they not even give a technical award for that? Nope. nope. They, they, their excuse is they don't have time to do more awards. No. Nope. So Which is we're not shy. It's a three-hour show. Suppo- yeah. yeah, we're mm. not supposed to know that stunt people exist. We're supposed to think that it's our favorite actors doing these incredible stunts. When the reality is that your stunt performers are professional athletes for TV mm. and film. So yep. while actors have to worry about, you know, a part maybe killing their career if they do something wrong a stunt double has to worry about actually being killed like bad acting has never killed anyone but bad stunts have uh and there's many things that are uh, needed to pull a film together and major awards do their best to try and recognize these there are a lot of fields in the oscars but the fact that something that's been a major stable of the film industry for over 100 years is just com- left in the cold and completely ignored yeah. It's quite it's quite a disgusting snub, to be honest. Yeah. Now, stunts do have their own awards, and that's fine. And I'm sure within that industry and within that profession, they probably view that as their own Oscars. But for the general public and the mainstream, you look at your BAFTAs and you look at your Oscars, don't you? No one ever talks about the indie things, unless you're really into your film. Yeah. You only ever kind of look at a few... Um, a few award sees, uh, you know, ceremonies, and that's kind of where you get your take from. But without stunt doubles, you don't get scenes like all of these scenes were done for real, without any CGI. Yeah, Indy went through the windshield under a truck in Raiders of Lost Ark. <clears throat> Zoe Bell rode the hood of a speeding car in Death Proof. The chariot race in Ben Hur. Yep. The flipping of the big rig in Dark Knight. When Bond vaulted over an alleyway and crashed through a window in the Bond Ultimatum. Bane's escape from the plane in the Dark Knight Rises oh, yeah. is all practical. That was basically, practical. Yeah. yeah. Fuck me. Uh, basically anything from the Raid and Mad Max Fury Road. Yeah. And countless, <laughs> countless other films where stunts wow. are being performed out in the open with no like no no safety rigs other than wires. These aren't just green screen effects. And... Didn't it take 30, 40 years for Jackie Chan to be recognised? Yeah, for what he did. Yeah, he won an Academy Award eventually, not for the quality of his movies, but fucking hell, the amount of stunts he's done. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's the amount of stunts he's done, and you would think that someone like that, and you know, I would even put, you know, to, to an extent, Tom Cruise is fucking incredible for the stunts that he mm. does. He is, um, he is, mate. But but people people recognise Tom. Oh, Tom Cruise is doing his stunts. That's amazing, and it is amazing. But the people who and do all teeth. the other stunts. For, for all the other actors, just get completely ignored. And that's why I wanted to just give a shout out to stunt doubles, because I think that they need to be recognised more by the yeah. Academy, by BAFTA and people like that. And just to quote a uh, legend stuntman Tony Leonard from the Fast and Furious franchise, I've noticed, <laughs> he says, I believe that stunt coordinators who work co- uh, whose work contributes to the overall success of an action film should be considered for an Academy Award. Uh, the excellent the excitement that quality stunt sequences generate in the cinema should no longer be overlooked and therefore that's why i'm giving all stunt doubles past present and future their very own honorary biggie award yeah absolutely a round of applause totally now, you can play. now play me off <laughs> <laughs> froze his fucking glass into the ground <laughs> no I, I agree. We needed to spend a bit of time on that one because the Unsung Hero Award is a very important award. Excellent pick there, mate. Excellent pick. Um, not many left now, guys. Not many left. Uh, just let, we'll have a quick catch up in the chat before we move so, on to the um, last few. So uh, Tig has said Biggie looks like a deputy head teacher. He does. How many deputy head teachers wear sunglasses in the classroom, Mark Ann? The hungover ones. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Zen Infinity has said stunt work and stunt doubles was almost my episode pick for the sequelizers current into season break. Still yeah. on my list, but I made them do an episode on outtakes instead. Well, yeah, it needs to be done. It absolutely, it's one of those things. Like when you when you watch, um, I know it's not really the same, but when I watched uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and you saw this, this like um, this stunt double, you know what I mean? It just it makes you think, doesn't it? The crazy thing about st- stunt doubles is that. There are stunt doubles God, for, red films, for films that you wouldn't even realise. Someone mm. just doing the simplest thing can sometimes require a stunt double. Yeah. But <coughs> exactly, exactly. And that, and that, that's not that's not to mention the people who act as butt doubles. 
Oh yeah. Yeah, I've heard yeah. about this. These butts um, double. Pips, uh, Pips that's says, why Candy, you, um... who's under the desk that you keep checking on? Oh, wouldn't you it's like Todd to Howard. know? He's uh, quite short, he's quite furry, and his name's Panda. Mm. <laughs> and the cat? <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to know where he is. When when, when Candy when Candy was talking about uh, soundtracks, uh, Mothram Deer just popped up in cap all capitals. Cyberpunk. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not happening. Not happening. <laughs> and uh, Debbie Punk di uh, did say when Stig was getting a little bit annoyed with me. Um, I hope Cliff Richard wins something now. <laughs> I can assure you, he's not nominated. <laughs> Don't bring that up. <laughs> oh, it looks like we've got our first YouTube watcher, DJ Walsh. He's, he'd be happy to know that he was nominated for an award earlier. But he missed it. So <laughs> Yeah, he did actually, yeah. He wasn't that he was nominated, but he didn't he didn't win. Sorry, mate. Right. <clears throat> we are sharp looking pricks. Let's move on. Um, well, actually, actually, before we move on, Zen Infinity's added oh. another good point. I think the most insane thing mm -hmm. I've learned stunt wise recently is, although it's not a double, it's a driver. You know that vault theft from Fast Five? Mm -hmm. That's a car. Yeah. Apparently, it's a van chassis with the vault shell over it because solid objects don't move right. There's a guy inside driving it. Fucking hell. <laughs> Jeez. The question is, how did he see crazy. anything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. few more left anyway. few more awards. The next award is hosted by Gadget. This is the best bad title or name award, I believe. Y yes, the, 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 there has become a little bit of a habit with things where, where to be original and to be creative, people are giving video games shit titles. Mm. Like, just ones that make no sense. Ones that I take the piss out of mercilessly. Yes. So the nominees are Returnal. Mm. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bollocks in it. A one that Candy and I take the piss out of frequently, Forspoken. <laughs> what does it mean? I don't know. It doesn't mean anything, but we call it done speaking. Done speaking. Done speaking. <laughs> <laughs> I just and there was a comeback for Eternal as well. Foskin. Yeah, yeah. There's a force in here. Thing. <laughs> um, the recently recently announced the Dio Field Chronicle. The what? The one of the Square Enix games from the State of Play the other day. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, the Dio Field Chronicle. Uh, triangle Strategy. Yes. Next. Yeah. That thing? yeah. Sorry, and, I was uh, reading something. <laughs> Uh, Final Fantasy Origins Stranger in Paradise. Oh, I hate that. So bad. I hate everything. So too many bad. words. Far too many to words. Kill chaos. Kill chaos. <laughs> <laughs> and the winner with um, scrabbling paper sounds in the background um, is Final Fantasy Origins Stranger in Paradise because that is the shittest name of anything that's yep. ever been put out there. Is it Stranger and... in Paradise, Final Fantasy Origins, or other way around? Which... No, it's Stranger, Stranger, Origin, Stranger in Paradise. <laughs> it's even matter, though. <laughs> it doesn't make it better either way. It's just one of these things. I don't know what it is about JRPG yes. recently. Just the names seem to get worse and worse and worse. Yeah. Like, uh, I think yeah. one of the better examples, which wasn't in the last year, which is why I didn't include it, was um, Kingdom Hearts games. Oh, I've God. just looked at a Kingdom Hearts one now. It's yeah. pretty three, one. three, four, two over seven days, or whatever it's called. <laughs> yeah, okay. well, Kingdom Hearts two point five HD remix song remix, of dreams. Rewind. Yeah, it's what Kingdom it's Hearts. It's like a math question, isn't it? Two point eight final chapter prologue. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I do have a prologue to the final chapter. I, what are you honestly, playing, son? I'm playing blah, 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 whatever you just said. Never mind. If, <laughs> Yeah, if, if if the title of your game has more than two words, not including like a the or an of or something yeah. like that, you've done it wrong. You've done it absolutely wrong. It just drives me mad. I, I, no, why am I playing myself? <laughs> He's not. I control this. No computer. Bad computer. You've yeah. done it. You're off. <laughs> done it. Sorry. The Fucking orchestra rude. has spoken. Yeah, we the can't bastards. Control that digital orchestra. I'm going to go throw something at them. The bastards, honestly, just. Get get angry with me. Let's storm the stage. <laughs> no, hey, gadget, no, me and you. Let's this fucking the end this show. Kill the horse. Strap him up. <laughs> <laughs> it's not me doing this. I promise. Fuck it do you is. think I know I would do something like this? Do you think I have the capabilities? No. Oh, is that the ruse all along? <laughs> uh, Zen Infinity said, apparently uh, days of title is supposed to be read out loud as three, five, eight days over two. God knows why. Wow. And is, if anyone's ever saying that, no way. No one's saying that. 
Oh, stupid, stupid, stupid. Let's have a quick look in with the chat again. Imagine being in the production office of a video game and you go, you know, (laughs) you're coming up with the concept of it and you go to like the publisher and the people who are giving you money goes, so yeah, the next Kingdom Hearts game is called 2.8 Days Over, whatever. And just like, and just watch their faces drop. (laughs) (laughs) It's like adding Requiem to the end of your movie, isn't it? You just Requiem. Requiem. This is the biggest Requiem, by the way. Uh, P- Pip says, Stranger in Paradise is what I call my one-night stands. <laughs> I thought you called him Stranger in Tune. Up the tune. <laughs> I hope not. Uh, Zen Infinity says, it feels like it has to be Triangle Strategy, right? It's a terrible name, but it makes sense. In a uh, weird way. Cat said, don't you dare pick my Returnal. Like, I like Returnal. It's still a shit name for the game. Come back all. Come back That's like a delivery yeah, that's company. It. Returnal, yeah. yeah we will be back. in two minutes. Our driver isn't going to be two minutes away. Returnal. Excellent. Um, oh, Smoke. actually, actually Zen Infinity did actually find a, um, a definition for Forspoken. Go on. One, to attract and fascinate in, or enchant. Two, to cast a spell over. Oh, there we go. There's magic Return. in that trailer. He's far too clever for us. Too clever for us. We don't deserve him. And, uh, and Super Nighty Cat <laughs> says, come back will mean something else to me. <laughs> I bet it bloody does. <laughs> And DJ Walsh says, Triangle Strategy is what I call my threesomes. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> the last two awards. I like the first awards of the evening. They're all really winners. And we're put into a, and were put into a random choice generator as an outcome could not be decided. <sighs> Video game or computer games are the bread and butter of procrastination. The stigma attached to players needs to be dropped. How can you binge Netflix for 10 hours but moan at me for playing Elden Ring solidly for 65 hours. Oh, we hey. can moan at you. you. You had to go to work. I still managed it, didn't I? Anyway, here's the best alternative video game awards, a.k.a. the Monster Energy Game Award 2022. And the nominees are Chernobylite. Somehow, The Division 2. Excuse me? <laughs> Heaven Dust 2. Chocobo GP. Who <laughs> nominated that? <laughs> Maquette. Dungeon Encounters. Rocket League Sideswipe. Super Magbot. Bamboozle from Teletext from 1995. <laughs> <laughs> that's a biggie one. Yeah. Loop Hero. And that, that's that's your and the winner is randomly selected. Chernobylite. Hey! Well done, Chernobylite. Mm. Do you want I to say something about it, Gadget? Because I have no idea what it is. Yeah, the, the, the height of Slav Junk. One of, <laughs> one, of, one of the best, worst performing games I've ever played. One, wander around solving spooky shit in the Chernobyl exclusion zone. What more do you want? Um, It's one of those games that it's, a, it's not a proper survival game, but it's a game that you have to play to what it wants you to do. It's not mm-hmm. you can't run and gun mm-hmm. it and stuff like that. You've got to tool yourself up. You've got to explore. It's really well put together. It's really realistically kind of uh, detailed based on the actual Chernobyl exclusion zone. Uh, it's fantastic. It's well worth a play. And the PS5 and Xbox Series update comes out in April, I think. Yeah. I'm not 100% sure because the developer's Ukrainian. I don't know whether they've moved out or whether they're safe or whatever, but that's the intention from them, what they yeah. recently announced. So, But yeah, it's a really good game if you can play it. Excellent. Well done, Chernobylite, for that random win that you just got. <laughs> Robotic Monkey says uh, Bamboozle was robbed. Well, there you go. And uh, Pip saying, as a new gamer this year, having played a lot of Oculus games, It Takes Two, Crash Bandicoot, and Steam World Dig, I've started to receive the stigma, and I'm sorry for ever contributing to it before my gamer awakening. <laughs> yeah, that's because it. She's a gamer. Gamer. And she drinks Monster Energy Drink. <sighs> Doritos next. And this is it, guys, the final award of the evening. It's How you got... I'm sorry, I burped then. <laughs> <laughs> Gin and tonic fucking getting to me. I'm red up as well. I'm Burp of the year. I'm red up. Um, the final award of the evening is the best alternative movie award. Now, we might nominate popular ones, but the winner, this winner has not been chosen at random. It's been selected by the Academy. And the nominees are Palm Springs. Ready or not. Candy Machines, Dune. <laughs> the Batman. Last Night in Soho. Free Guy. Don't Look Up. And Ghostbusters Afterlife. 
And the winner is... Palm Springs! Woo! <laughs> so, unfortunately, the cast couldn't be with us this evening, but we have a represent re representative, Stig, who's going to talk about the movie. So, Palm Springs stars Andy Samberg, Kristen Milioti, and J.K. Simmons. Um, there's been many riffs on Groundhog Day formula. Uh, things like Fifty First Dates, uh, Edge of Tomorrow, Happy Death Day, which has like a horror twist. Russian Doll kind of revitalized it with an episodic approach on TV. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. yet, despite Groundhog Day being a genre on itself, uh, Max Babaus Babauka, I can never say his name right, Babauka's witty and wise <laughs> Palm Springs is uh, a first movie that doesn't just apply to the old former, but and and the new uh, the same old thing. It, it kind of it transforms and radicalizes it because it's it does something that the others have never done, and that's if what happens if two people were in the sit in the time loop. Yeah. So it treats its audience with respect uh, by heading straight off into the premise straight away. There's no setup, no rug pulls. It just goes on straight from the get go. You know it's a time loop film. Uh, it uses its concept of two people in a loop to explore relationships and human connection. And it does so with being funny, insightful, full of heart, emotion. Uh, two leads, uh, two leads that have wonderful chemistry with each other. I know. Talk about no, no, no. It's Blame not on. Continue. Blame continue. This is not I on. You will I be hearing from my not. lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! He's gone. Wow, he's actually mad. Stig, has he's fuming. Left. Can we have a, a time count and when everyone thinks he can actually get that bow tie off? <laughs> so tried. To... Oh, he's back. I tried to take my. Uh... <laughs> I tried to take my bow tie off quicker, but it wasn't working. <laughs> I didn't... genuinely then. I didn't realise that were a bit that you were doing. <laughs> He sent me a message that play me off. I've got an idea. <laughs> oh, no, but just quickly, uh, seriously, you yeah. need to watch Palm Springs because it's, so good. It's, it's a film that just got completely and utterly overlooked when it got released in the UK because it came out seven months after the US, in yeah. and out of cinemas, no fanfare, yeah. no one talked about it, but it's, it's fucking incredible. It's there on Amazon for you all to watch. Yeah. Wasn't Excellent. it one of those films that, that came out kind of in that small window when you could go to the cinema between pandemic lockdowns and yep. it just kind of didn't get enough buzz when it hit over here? Yeah. Right. What I want to do before we continue, the chat has about a minute or so now to let us know what they think any media that they believe um, has deserves a biggie. You don't have to go into detail. There's something unsung, something that's probably not going to win an Oscar or something. Just quick. You've got, you've got about a minute while I just... Try and cool off a little bit. <laughs> Just yeah, what, 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 with this, uh, this champagne. Mm. While well, 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 that's going on, Super Natty Cat's getting a lesson on what bamboozle was. That's oh, fucking incredible. Incredible. Poor innocent child. She never I sat think, and played bamboozle. I think... Um, I'm red hot. Yeah. Whoever controls that modern escapism, no context Twitter, please use that clip. <laughs> <laughs> That, that that Twitter that's that did scares you me. Did you generally think I was trying to fit then? Yeah, I didn't realise. I, 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 that's why. I, that's why I just went. No, let him play on. I was like, let him play. I, 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 oh, oh fuck, he's done one. So peek behind the curtain for the listeners there, but no, it was. Uh, it was all set up. Oh jeez. The the first one wasn't. That, that, I know. That, I know the first one. Oh, first yeah, one yeah, we noticed. That was the, Oodles. The, that was Oodles telling Gadget to tip. To, to, to it was actually. Off. Yeah, he did team me up and said, <laughs> "Keep your finger on that button." It's because he's pissed <laughs> off that Adam Sandler got an award. He'll forever, <laughs> he'll forever know that, that Adam Sandler was a biggie, and that'll <laughs> kill him in his sleep. <laughs> he's going to come and brain me with it, isn't he? Right. What's the chat saying? What's the chat saying, Mr. Uh, Gadget? So, this is so, what we're going to do instead of the mailbag. We're pip, just going to have a little chatty moment. Yeah. Pip saying it takes two saved our relationship. I hope so. I think it's broken a lot, to be fair. <laughs> it, honestly, it was a really, really good game for, for us to play like as a couple, and it's a very good couples game. Yeah, I've heard many things about it. Um, I don't think it... I mean, neither of us thought that it stuck the landing on its narrative. We thought that the ending was kind <laughs> of... Um, but the actual 
act of playing it, it was really good. There are some something... fucking evil puzzles in that game, though. Mm, Real proper about, brain benders. Um, split screen, I think. So. <laughs> what did you say? Just so, oh the yeah, Super Nighty yeah. Cat, best invention of the year, Candy's tampon shooter. <laughs> it's a no, no. It's a Always bringing the tone cat. down, that Nighty Cat. <laughs> Usually about tampons. No, 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 no. Any more? We just patrons. Just do, do our patrons want just an episode of Candy and Nighty Cat just shooting the shit? Talking oh, periods. <laughs> Period. We just set, set a microphone up with them two, sat in a weather spoons, see what happens. We need, you know, some. I don't know if it still happens, but there were some pubs back in the day where you'd have like, certainly in the girls' toilets, there'd be like two toilets in one cubicle facing each other, so you could have a chat with the what? Mates. What? What? That's seen, a real I've, thing. I've seen pictures of I think them. It, I think it might possibly be just girls, but we need to set because there's going to be good acoustics in there. We need to find a bar that still has those, and we'll just hunker down on the loo and just podcast, see where it takes us. I'm changing I mean, the stretch goals to the uh, you... the, the lady cast. We've had the bar. So, so, super nice cast into this idea. You, you, what should we you, call seem, it? you seem shocked, Oodles, but us as men stand next to each other, pissing in a trough. Yeah, it's exactly the same, isn't it? <laughs> it's exactly uh, the same. Supernatic has same. Uh, Ponty Preeth Weatherspoons had one. Mm, no, Ponty Pool, there sorry. There we go. Ponty Pool. It's a bit fucked up, right? though, isn't it? It's a little bit fucked up. <laughs> Are you staring at me? The vagina cat. monologues. <laughs> the vagina monologues. Oh, Pip, uh, you can uh, definitely join. We need you. The vagina uh, uh, monologues. Um, um, and Pip, act, Pip asked, is this linked to my tactical tampon invention? <laughs> I think it's Jacket's got all dusty now from throwing it on the floor. Mm. Pip, Pip can, 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 you, can you elaborate in the chat as to what your tactical tampon invention was? DJ Walsh has suggested modern femscapism. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Funny, chat? Funny chat. Funny oh, chat. <laughs> and flows who's? <laughs> and flows hose, yeah. yeah. Uh, the I, 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 I will say, Pip's been catching up on the Dragon Stream of Score Cheap um, uh, this week, and she's she's just gotten to the episodes where you end up on on the dread beat, and she she did walk <sighs> walk into the living room after being like doing some work or something like that, and comes and says, "I've just got to the just got to the bit where they're talking about Capri's Fanny." <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Amazing! That was. Put my ear that. to it; I can hear the sea. For our American yeah. listeners, we mean. At vagina, not but. vagina. Not but. anyway. Sc- 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 scrolling back up, um, Debbie Punk says Game Pass needs a biggie. It does, mm. but it's not getting one. Uh, Nimrod Hicks says inscription for me. I, I I think I've broken Nimrod by pointing him in the way of inscription because the lad's been playing. How it can you break months. something that's already broken? <laughs> I mean, I know he is a broken person, but like I, I feel like I've ruined his life somewhat because he can't seem to play anything but Casey's mod for it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Any more for any more? Uh... I think uh, podcasting in general. I think it's great. What, wins that, a biggie. <laughs> that, yeah, because we came from listening to a different podcast, and um, I came from the guys my, my on our mom and dad loving each other. Their own. And no, but seriously, I think it's sex uh, deserves a biggie. Sex it's great that people biggie. are, you know, going out and doing their own podcast. I think it's great. I think every fuck is doing a podcast nowadays. Every mm. every man and the dog. Dog yeah, cast? but it's great. I think we it's talked good, about it? already on our like Christmas one. We talk about the amount of indie podcasts that I've discovered working on so the socials good. and like so good. ones that I've like guested on and ones I'd like to have on with us. And it's just so good. Like, like the indie se- podcast scene is great. Like, yeah, it's all well and good. Like, oh, we're my favorite comedian mm-hmm. or TV personality is doing a podcast. That would be mm. good. But it's not the same, is it? It's not the same. No, like the the and the thing is as well is the people on the indie podcast scene is like when you tell them how much that you enjoy their show and you speak to them about it. Like they appreciate you get feedback, you have conversations, you talk with them. It's mm-hmm. like, well, I ain't getting a tweet back from Peter Crouch about no, you not. am I? <laughs> <laughs> I, I? I think as well, I've, I've got to think like, um, like I, I, one of the bigger podcasts I listen to behind the bastards, they obviously, they run adverts for other stuff that's on iHeartMedia. And you get so many things where it's like some like TV star or some film star is, is like, come and says, so I've decided to do a podcast about this, and it's just like you haven't decided anything. Your publicist said that. It, it always sounds so corporate when you get like really big famous people doing podcasts. Mm. Yeah, Plus, um, gives everyone else a chance. Well, it's it's not so much gives everyone. Every, uh, 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 I'll put my teeth back in. It's not so much that giving everyone else a chance. It's more that just like 
when it comes across as really corporate, it comes across as really insincere. When you, you when it's supposed to when the when especially when celebrities and stuff like that try to do like a casual chat podcast like we do, yeah. like it's just it comes across as super scripted and super insincere, and it it annoys me. I just yeah, when, when we first started, I didn't want to do a news type podcast, but in, in our green room, we kind of talk about current stuff for our patrons, but it's not something that. I, I don't look for that in podcasts, and I think the indie scene is has, has covered like alternative media. Like our, our winner this evening, what the fuck do you want? Podcast. They talk about stuff from twenty five years ago, and it, I, I don't know. It's better that way, in my opinion, because news is not good, especially no. lately. <laughs> so, um, so Pip's uh, written out her tactical tampon. Do you want to? Do you want to hear what her idea is? Because actually, to be fair, it's a really fucking good idea. I mean, the Absolutely. listeners probably do. So, a, a tactical tampon. If oh, you're with God. a guy who is a proper panty dropper, but you want to try and control yourself, <laughs> pop in a pop in Pip's tactical tampon, and you should find yourself. Should you find yourself in his arms, getting all hot and steamy, no matter what, you will have to pop to the loo to remove that tactical tampon, which gives you a second to compose yourself and <laughs> regain your control. <laughs> I've no way. No, word. that's going to. Tell I've no. Been, never mind. I have a comment, but I'll tell you later. Everything Pip does makes me speechless. Robotic Monkey says, "Mysticism over me." Robotic Monkey says, "Biggie should get a best a Biggie for best blue screen on stream." <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that Final Fantasy ended. Oh yeah. God, high yeah, wind. I remember now. He's like, "Oh, it's the high wind." Oh, it's the high wind. I'm like, wow. He's not realizing <laughs> that the rest of us can't see anything that's yeah. happening. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Zen Infinity says, uh, I think my most played game recently has been Deep Rock Galactic. I played Being a dwarf well. and doing dwarf oh, things is surprisingly game. satisfying, at least until a bulk detonator shows up. If you haven't played Deep Rock Galactic, it does what it sounds like. Yeah, me and my son play that all the time. I think it's fantastic. Not bad for a free game. Yeah, I didn't pay a fucking penny for it. And yeah, such a good game. Uh, DJ Wars says, uh, I love indie podcasting. My pints won't buy themselves. Exactly, exactly, DJ, exactly. Biggie should get another Biggie for the best. Fuck this game, I'm turning it off on stream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the way I thought it'd be other night. Do we, do we think Biggie Quite will have end. this finished by uh, next year's Biggies? What, Dark Souls? Dark Souls, yeah. Uh, do you know I, what? I have I, no idea how far I am into that game. What I was the last no thing you did on Dark Souls, Biggie? No, he's, 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 still in, um, <laughs> he's still in the archives. Oh, he won't finish it till. No, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out the old can you believe it? Can you believe we've, we've we've had the second biggies already? It seems like oh, yesterday we did the first ones. It's wild. What a what a crazy nice year. Nice to be what part crazy. of it this year. Yeah, you were just a listener last year, weren't you? Candy? Just a listener. I know. Just a scrub last year. Now you're part of it. Absolutely. It's gone so quickly. <laughs> Who knows? I didn't hear maybe, that last comment. Maybe you guys weird. in the chat could be the new the new member this time next year doubt it because I like five uh, but, Zen, Zen Infinity going back to what Pip was saying is, I'm glad the tactical aspect didn't turn out to be a laser sight <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean it could <laughs> uh, Pip wants Oculus, more Oculus games to, to be covered on the podcast the only medium she feels engaged in well you know what? I should play some more Oculus games buy me one <laughs> it sounds like a way to go out and hit man oh god uh, Candy Machine needs a Hot Fuzz Award for the best West Country slip. Yeah. yeah. The, the Wurzel does come out every now and again. Wurzel Womage. Gert. It did, didn't it? It's on the Patreon, wasn't it? I think. Yeah. I heard it worse when I heard it back. Like, I don't realise. Yeah. I, I feel like when I moved to Western, I didn't have that much of an accent, and I started taking the piss out of it so much, and it just kind of stuck. Yeah. She's, she um, looks like Jessica Rabbit. She sounds like Pertwee. You know what I mean? It's, it's crazy. Hagrid. Hagrid. <laughs> uh, both crazy. Supernatic Cat and Robotic Monkey are asking, when's the social? We need to book one. We, we need to go to somewhere and just like tell people to turn Well, up. me and Gadget I... was, was talking this, this afternoon. He says, are we going to top the biggest after this year's? And I said, maybe a live, live in person I biggest? In a I, I, I think we need to do that. Yeah, that would be March next year, though. I think we need to do something before that. Yeah, to, to get his feet wet. Yeah, mm-hmm. until There's you know. Something around when Sheffield Arena next year, the biggies. <laughs> um, when I read, you know, when I read that, I, I thought she was meaning when's Candy doing the social? So we can podcast? go home. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I 
was like, wow, somebody's keen about to hear about our website. <laughs> We're talking now because we've rushed through it because it's live. So we've been out of pace. We've been out yeah. of pace and we haven't got a, uh, a bulging sack. So we're just having yeah, a right on the night, mate. The... That's what I keep saying. It's all um, right on um, the night. Pip's also pointing out that the same is happening with, with, her, with her and myself. She takes the piss out of the way I say things because ooh, ooh. apparently Geordies are funny to listen to. Mate, what were I doing last week when I was? Oh, you are fucking terrible with it, mate. I you read. Were... <laughs> you were walking around just listening to people talking and like grinning like an idiot. I was buying drinks in Geordie accent, and they were just looking at me like I weren't. <laughs> so, so, so yeah, funny. so Pip, Pip is pointing out the way I say "cook" and the way I say "book," and apparently she loves the way I say "dildo." Dildo. <laughs> dildo. <laughs> but you've you've said that before, but how often do you say the word "dildo"? <laughs> Not that often. Well, but it's one of those around. ones that as soon as I said it, she went, <gasps> and then it's like she saw it or just you your that, voice saying when, it. No, just, just the, the, me saying we, the word. When, when we sent that voice message from the podcast as well, isn't it? you're like, Stig, tell us what, tell her how you killed the dragon. It's like, with a big pink dildo. And she's like, oh, I love the way you say dildo. <laughs> dildo. <laughs> it's amazing how other people hear your accent. Yeah, it's. um. This yeah, you all take the piss out of my accent far too much. <laughs> what, 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 what was the one that you you pointed out to me on the pod? It was um, it was when I was re oh, it was when we were talking about vehicles, and someone mentioned a car with a insignia that was like eighty eighty eight. That's the one. Eighty eight. <laughs> I thought for a second that was that was the first time child. first time Candy had picked up my accent. When I got when I got yeah, that yeah, um, yeah, yeah. when I got that. Not that fucking junkie. sound like that. You do. Yes, when, do. I got, <laughs> when I got that drink in Newcastle and he went eight pound eight, eight, eight or whatever he said, he had eight pound and I went eight pound. <laughs> eight pound. <laughs> eight pound, <laughs> man. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's all we're going to get from the chat because they're just enjoying the bants, aren't they? Bants. Oh, oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Pip points out that I, I do actually say the word dildo a lot because I quote Metalocalypse. Ah. <sighs> Yes, and it is, is when they call things is dildos because they, they do not like. They do not like. Well, I've been doing Excellent. this pod for over two years. I still have no fucking idea what any of you are saying. <laughs> I say, oh boy, should I talk like this and you could understand me better? Yeah, what do you want, Del boy? Oh, I talk like this because we're gonna be like Biggie, aren't we? <laughs> if you all talk like Biggie, then you'll understand us, won't he? <laughs> <laughs> Jelly deal. It's a fucking body movement when you're. <laughs> I don't know why you have to do that. It's just not what you do. <laughs> I've not been doing much this I week. Talk so I can't talk that much. <laughs> You'd never be able to see my head on YouTube, on YouTube that. honestly. Like I say, it's not bothered about the voice, it's about the. <laughs> and the award for unnecessary death in a film. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you do. That's what you do. Oh, oh my god. I know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I haven't drunk half a bottle of champagne at all. I've, I've drunk too much gin and tea. <coughs> Sorry if you are an audio listener, because it's been a very visual episode. But we get have on some... YouTube and watch it. Get Trust on me. Get on YouTube and watch it. We have some socials to do. I don't know if we've even decided what we're doing next week, but we haven't. We'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> Later Can you in the take week. It away? I'm just adding a little YouTube section here as well because that's Ooh, a good thing to on add the fly, in. On the fly. Yeah. Lie. I'll still fuck it up anyway. Coming uh, in your ears. I'm just going to guess that's what the address is. Um, socials. You can visit our website, modernescapism.co.uk. On there, you can find a link to all of our socials, contact details, and our merch store. If you have any comments or feedback, you can fill out a form on the website, tweet us or email us on modernescapismpod at gmail.com. Got a Discord server, most of you are in it. If you're not, get on it because my cat what just caused that? some kind of disaster. <laughs> I'm going to pretend I didn't hear it. It's Ross Traganza. She's like, sure, shit, we're supposed to be a recording video. <laughs> Is that who was under the desk? I, he's under the desk. I, <laughs> he, I think he's at, yeah, he's broken a bit of furniture. Oh, Ross. My cat. Um, How would you my, my cat. Break your furniture. Because it's a devil cat. It is yeah, Satan. 
Satan. So yeah, Discord, come and join us. Twitch, if you want to see us do some gaming or join us for our occasional live podcasts, you know the address because you're here. But if you're listening, it's twitch.tv forward slash modern escapism. And for our gaming schedule, you're probably best off having a look on Twitter or Discord, or if you can give us a like on um, Twitch, it will give you a um, notification. Sorry, I stuttered there because I'm just hearing what the chaos that's unfolding in the rest of my house. I'm just going to... I'll I deal with that It's the cat. It's, fuck me. <laughs> they said, get a ragdoll. They're the chillest breed you can get. It's not. It's Satan. Again, guys, she's single. She needs someone to look after her. Before I start moving more cats in. I'm yeah. Honestly, I'm nearly 40. <laughs> it's time. Come on. Uh, YouTube. We just spoke mm. about it. You can find us on youtube.com forward slash modern escapers and you'll find our podcast. You'll find, oh, actually, Scott Sheep is a separate one, but you'll find the link to it there. You'll find some of our game playthroughs and just a little bit of randomness every now and again. It'll all be uploaded to our YouTube. And we've spoken about our Patreon. Um, so you can find us on patreon.com forward slash modern escapers. And if you want to give us a little bit of financial help to help us carry on doing what we do, mainly or drink. If you want, and drinking, yeah, mostly drinking champagne. So, you know. Although champagne was just this evening, so I can't afford it. Please, please subscribe to the Patreon. And if you want to support us in a non-financial way, please leave us a five-star review wherever you can because it just makes such a difference. The more five-star reviews we get, the more listeners we get, and the more we can entertain you all. And next week, we have yet to decide, and we'll upload that on Twitter as soon as we know, and it will be within the next day or so. Yeah, you'll find out. Fuck it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that is it. Because I'm fucking red up. That is it. For the uh, the live portion of the show, for Ed, I can't see now. I've took my glasses on. Fuck, fucking hell, put them back on. Oh, I've just God. been called out in chat as well about my bed. Yes, yes. Oh. Pip has a point. Point in chat. Get a base for your bed, candy machine. I'm putting you on blast. Yeah, yeah just uh, for the for everyone's information. I don't have a bed. I have a mattress on the floor. Yeah, she <laughs> sleeps on a lilo. So that again, bed is broken single. a few times. <laughs> 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 and, uh, and Debbie Punker said Panda needs a daddy. Panda needs yeah, a daddy. Yeah, he does. Panda does need a daddy. Yeah, so does be that. Yeah. I am Red Hot, <laughs> Robotic yeah. Monkey. And, uh, t Tigger said, good if weird show, guys. Yeah, oh, weird is weird. good. We aimed for weird. We aimed for weird. <laughs> what were you expecting? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we aimed for weird. But yes, the Oscars. Fuck the Oscars. Fuck the Oscars. The, the live show is now over. If you are listening in the future... And you're not a patron. This is the end of the the podcast. But if you are a patron, we're going to disappear into the green room. Thank you for watching us live. Uh, if you have watched us live and you are a patron, listen to the episode when it drops for the added content at the end. There will be shenanigans. So thank you again for the second annual Biggies 2022. We'll see you next year for even more weird categories, whatever we can think of. I might get a fan <laughs> for the room next year, because fucking hell. End the podcast, for fuck's sake. <laughs> get the orchestra. Play him off! Play him <laughs> off! <laughs> so, oh, I'm going to have to play it off. Good night.